to my live. Uh, what's your name? What can I call you by? Hey, Naomi. I'm Lee. Lee, nice to meet you. Um, hit me up. What do you want to talk about? Um, yeah, you know, I, I guess you're obviously talking about trans issues. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want everyone to, you know, be their authentic selves and me too, yeah, and, and, and really just live a happy life. Um, and you know, I I do believe in more compassion and tolerance in general. Um, Heck yeah, yeah. But I think oh no, here know, comes feel, the butt. Yeah, but sorry, <laughs> but. I feel like um, a lot of the debate is being defined by the edges and the extremists um, in a certain way. And, um, you know, like recently I saw the John Oliver um, segment. Perhaps Mm -hmm. you did too. Yes, I did. Yeah. And, you know, I I, I got to be honest. I don't. I, I I used to kind of be a fan of his when he was on the Daily Show, but I just find everything he says is just completely, you know, one sided. Generally condescending. I know it's a comedy show, but it's really he takes on very serious topics and does deep dives on them. Do you think he got anything wrong with regards to the trans topic? Uh, yeah. Um, what would that be? Uh, so specifically. You know, he just completely oversimplified puberty blockers. And, you know, he made it, it made it seem like it was just like, you know, a VCR tape. You just press pause or on demand, and then you just right, go back to your programming. And and the honest answer is, you know, I can say, hey, I'm not a doctor. You're not a doctor. And even if you're a doctor, no one really knows. It's It's been, it, you know, it's been studied for such a small period of time. And it's been, listen, We have every, literal three decades of research on puberty blockers. Okay, and there are side effects and there are long-term well yeah all, all medicine has side effects the point Absolutely. is that we do a risk benefit analysis and determine whether or not um the benefits of a medicine would outweigh the risk and it seems in the case of, of trans youth in terms of their mental health improvements yeah it, it's overwhelmingly very effective at alleviating gender dysphoria and making them feel greater congruence with their body at improving their mental health i mean this is what the peer-reviewed research shows and those are wonderful benefits and you know out of the potential side effects i mean almost all of them entirely go away when puberty blockers are stopped. And the only thing I've seen which which potentially persists afterwards is slightly lowered bone density. Um, but it doesn't seem to be at any kind of like problematic level. And so it seems like, yeah, the, the benefits are profoundly positive and, and the risks are either completely negligible or extremely rare. Okay. Um, you know, you've uh, obviously read up on the topic and I, I, I feel like there are probably people that do regret it or will regret it. Um, well, sure. I mean, like with, with in terms of like any kind of, um, you know, like like medicine or procedure, there are people that um, decide to go off of it or, or regret it. But we know that like from the peer reviewed research, actually the rate, even the trans youth detransitioning is incredibly rare. There was this great peer reviewed study in the pediatrics journal of 2022. Uh, they studied 317 binary trans kids aged three through 12 that had socially transitioned prior to the start of the study and they followed them for five years. And what's cool is that because some of these kids were, you know, of the age where they should be, st- where they could be starting puberty blockers, um, we actually do have some data on that study of kids that took puberty blockers, uh, it was 92 of the kids in the study did go on to take puberty blockers. And by the end of it, only one kid uh, stopped taking his puberty blockers. That was it. Okay. I, you know, I just wasn't And that was after comfort- a period of five years too, which is like really cool. Um, okay. <laughs> um, I just, uh, just completely, um, not comfortable with the way he presented it. Um, I, I think this is this is still, you know, a complicated topic for the individuals in question, and and obviously for the general public as well. And it's it's to just sort of present. This I guess, like, topic. what's what's wrong with how he presented things? Um, 
he presented a sort of just, you know, uh, a fight between good and evil, the evil Republicans. And I, I understand, you know, there's there's some legislation that uh, could. Well, I mean, to- when the Republican Party is, is trying to pass bills which would essentially disallow doctors from following established medical guidelines by the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics. All of these major medical institutions have established medical guidelines that are backed by research and data. And the Republican Party is trying to step in and say that the government is going to disallow doctors from following these medical guidelines. That seems pretty evil. I think that, like, you know, you should be able to see your doctor and they should be allowed to practice medicine that has, you know, been backed by research and science without the government saying, no, you actually can't practice that type of medicine because my feelings disagree with it. Yeah. I mean, like 80 years ago, um, doctors said that um, smoking's great for you. 40 years ago, they said that uh, um, homosexuality is a disease. So, you know, do you have Science. any evidence that like the the literature on trans people is wrong? I mean, like it was it was pretty clear. Like even even within like um, early research on like cigarettes and stuff, like yeah, there were some troubling trends that that was in the data that like you could you could find. And and with regards to like gay people, I mean, most of the data was based off of how how they had poor socioeconomic outcomes due to their marginalization, ostracization, um, and that's why they were they were demonized. I think that like you can actually look in the data and, and find why those conclusions were incorrect. Um, do you have any evidence that like the conclusion Conclusions about trans people are incorrect. Um, so obviously, I've not done scientific research, but you know, when people look at um, this UPenn swimmer and competing against women, they they have this fundamental. Even people. Wait, why are, are we talking about trans people in sports? I, th- I thought we were talking about like whether or not gender transition is positive for trans people. This seems like completely unrelated. Well, I mean, he he did bring up sports in his segment as well um, to illustrate the unfairness of. Oh, so so you're so I guess like the conclusions about trans uh, medical transition being good for trans people, those are solid. Then you want to talk about trans sports instead? No, no, I don't think they're solid. I mean, I I I. Then I've, what's I've your contrary evidence? I've watched TikTok doctors talk about. Um, you know how, how kind of just how easy it is to transition and it, it's uh, for for adults or for, for for like teenagers um i think for both i've i've, I've seen TikTok so for, for teenagers you have to you have to obtain triple consent as in the teenager needs to give consent their parents need to give consent and they need multiple therapist letters that span the course of at least six months of gender therapy if not years depending on the specific guidelines like it is not easy for a trans teenager to get any kind of gender affirming treatment they have to be going to gender therapy for months and months and months and years and years and receive triple consent before they can even go on puberty blockers let alone hormones yeah, triple consent by who? I, I, I said it was the, the teen themselves, their parents, and multiple like therapist letters. So, I mean, you it, it's probably not hard to find therapists that can conform to your wishes, right? You, you have to get gender therapy for at least six months is, is the lowest I've, I've ever seen in any of these guidelines. Like... You're just going to keep seeing someone for, for six months and they're going to be like faking things. That seems ridiculous. Why would someone like fake things continuously for like six months just to go on like a medicine that's like not right for them? That seems like really, really silly. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not suggesting that. I'm saying that what if, you know, the teen is being conditioned by peers and their parents and being sort of pushed into something. So your evidence is just playing the what if game? Well, I mean, we are talking about hypotheticals, right? Well, here's the thing. I have empirical evidence which supports that gender transition is helpful for trans people. All you have is playing what if. Well... Um, I and like, particular... that's what the gender therapy is for. It's to determine who is actually trans and whether or not, you know, any kind of gender affirming treatment would benefit them. Most kids that go through gender therapy aren't trans. Actually, it's it tends to be the case that most kids that go through gender therapy just find out they're gender nonconforming and, and just choose to live as a gender nonconforming person. And they're totally cool with that. Um, that's what actually happens in most of these cases. 
there was a case I was reading about, um, and it was um, a child that was in a custody battle between two parents. And, you know, I'm, I'm just sort of reading these things on Twitter and then columnists writing about Is it. Is this the I one in no, Canada? Um, the, wo- the woman, the mother, was a, a physician. I don't know if that narrows it down. And she... Um, if it's the one in the, Canada, I'm familiar with this case. Okay, what, do you know the name of the case? Um, I don't think they had. I don't think their names were like public or anything because they were, like there were there were court orders that like they weren't supposed to like dox people. Okay. Um, so obviously the people that presented it, you know, on my Twitter feed, they they could be completely uh, biased and and uh, the you know or or the father could be lying about it, but he seemed to be saying that the the mother, the physician, was pushing it towards the child, and the child just happened to be kind of you know, um, kind of a confu- just a, a kid who is just... Yeah, so this that's that's not... Um, okay, I, I can tell you what actually happened in this case. Um, so essentially, the mother had full custody of the, of the child. Like, the, the dad was a deadbeat dad that did not have any custody rights of the child. And the child was a trans kid. They had been seeing doctors and therapists and, and, and gender therapists for years, and, and they determined, yeah, this kid's trans, and they would benefit from, from you know, uh, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, um, et cetera, et cetera. And um, when it was time for the kid to receive gender affirming treatment, um, the father tried to the father who had no custody of the kid tried to stop the kid from receiving the treatment. And this ended up becoming a court case. And um, the the father was ordered by the court not to dox uh, the child, the child's mother and their doctors, like like don't publicly release the information so that they're not like targeted by like waves of harassment and attack. And the father violated those court orders by doxing the doctors and the kid and and his mother. And and got in trouble for that. Okay. How's it, so it's just like how's, a, a dad's trying to go against established medical guidelines, docs doctors and, and his kid and his kid's mother and put them all in danger simply because his feelings disagree with the medical guidelines and the, and the medical treatment, which was approved for this kid. Like that. He's just a deadbeat dad. That's literally it. How does a kid know he's trans and not just gay? Well, they talk to gender therapists for years, and that helps them explore their gender, explore their sexuality uh, in terms of all these these different parts of their identity and what's right for them. And it was determined that, yeah, this kid's trans and they would benefit from from gender affirming treatment. Yeah. Uh, I, so, yeah, I, I still have a, a difficult time with, with um, such extreme measures um what's extreme are you are you saying that the established medical guidelines are extreme measures yeah uh puberty blockers surgery um okay so like trans minors almost nobody gets surgery um it is it is only the case that like the the most rich and privileged and like seeing seeing therapists for their entire life that would ever get any kind of gender affirming surgery as a minor. Um, like it, it is like the less than 0.1% of cases. And um, even then, like I'm cool, like if people, you know, like wait till they're 18 to get surgeries, but like also there are minors that get surgeries all the time, even even like ones that are like gender related um, that are cisgender and, and nobody ever complains about that. Like there, there are cis girls that are like aged 15, 16, they get double mastectomies to help with like back pain and stuff. And like that happens all the time. Yeah, I mean that's that's very different, though, right? Not at all. It's it's a double mastectomy either way. Like if it's a trans if it's a trans dude versus a like a yeah, cis girl, they're true. both getting the same procedure. Double mastectomy when you're, you know, um, super large, whatever. So, so wait, wait, why why are these established medical guidelines extreme? They're backed by research and it shows that that improves the mental health of trans people. How is that extreme? That seems like good medical guidelines that are backed by research and data. Well, so I, I, I think sociologists produce a lot of, lot of bad 
research. I'm talking about data. like medical data, like, like seriously, like, like data that comes from the medical field, not the sociological field. Essentially, yeah. what they do is they do longitudinal studies that study trans kids, trans adults, et cetera, over time, you know, through treatment and see whether or not their mental health improves or, or, or gets worse with treatment and stuff. And yeah, we, it, is, it is the overwhelming body of scientific research which affirms that gender transition improves the mental health and the overall well-being of trans people. We see this in study after study after study, even in systematic literature reviews, which are broad collections of study. I have at least three different systematic literature reviews linked in my research doc, which all find that gender transition helps trans people. These are, these are the broadest collections of studies, peer-reviewed studies that we have, and they all show that the overwhelming trend is that, yes, gender transition helps trans people. That's just what the peer-reviewed data shows. And this is medical scientific data, not sociological data. Okay. Um, I'll keep listening to you. And uh, I'll... Um... Oh, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I'll, uh, I'll keep listening then. Coolio, um, did, was there any other topics you want to talk about? Um, so what about, what about the sports thing? Do you, do you agree with that? Um, for example, like the UPenn swimmer who's on um, hormones. Leah Thomas, for, what about her? Uh, for two years, do you, do you think that's fair to cis females? So I, I don't think this would be like any kind of political issue. I think that we should let the, you know, sports scientist, uh, like, like the community of sports scientists do fair and unbiased research on, you know, the efficacy of hormones and in terms of, of how much they affect your physicality. We know that certainly it is the case that hormones overwhelmingly nuke your physicality and, and change you physically so much um, to be in line with the other sex. Now, there are certain um, things that might carry over from having a certain puberty or the other. Um, and I think that it's worth researching on kind of like a sport by sport basis, whether or not it is it is fair um, to include trans people in like any kind of like regulations about like being on hormones for X years, um, perhaps some kind of like, you know, body dimension restrictions. I think that that's totally okay for sports scientists to research, but I don't see this as like a political issue at all. I don't think that like putting politics into sports science is going to make sports science any better. And I hope that sports scientists can research this fairly and unbiasedly without influence from say like Republicans telling them they have to ban trans people in, in women's sports or whatnot. Yeah. I mean, sports is... But what we know is that good. hormones overwhelmingly bring you in line with the sex you transition to physically. And it's not like Leah Thomas was ever dominating in her sport. I mean, she only won a single event at the NCAA championship. And her, her time that won was over nine seconds behind the world record set by a cis female. She was just a, a pretty decent swimmer in a year where it was particularly not competitive. I mean, she was only ranked like 31st in, in her league. Like, she actually was not like, like a, you know, complete dominating swimmer. She's just a yeah. pretty decent swimmer. That's, that's about it. Nine seconds. You're comparing a world record uh, to that was, a that college. That was the college record. And she was a college senior. So that would be the time where you would break the college record. But she was, she was never winning NCAA championships as a man. Actually, she was she was competitive in the men's division before she transitioned. Uh, people that make that claim are only counting the year where she was medically transitioning, but still competing with the men. Actually, her first year of swimming, she was a regular top eight competitor in the men's division. And then the second year competing, she was taking HRT. It destroyed her physicality, but she was still competing against men. And she was getting destroyed because her body was becoming female, um, like physically. And so obviously she's going to be destroyed by men then. But then after two years of, of being on cross-sex hormones, she was finally allowed to compete with the men. women. And she was competing at about the same level she was before, at least relatively uh, uh, speaking. Like her, her times as a woman are, are lower than her times as a man ever were. Because once again, hormones nuke your physicality and bring you in line with a sexy transition too. Hmm. Someone's saying she was ranked 531 at men's. No, That's that after she was on HRT. Before she was on HRT, she was ranked 89th in the men's division, actually. So 89th in the men's, and what is the female? Uh, by her senior year, she was ranked 31st in the female division, which seems pretty fair for somebody who, you know, competes and trains for four years to go from 89th to 31st. I mean, at, you know, going from a freshman to a senior who's training for four years, you tend to go up at least, you know, um, 
some number of ranks and that's no that's no kind of like upset as far as like gaining ranks like gaining about 50 ranks over the course of four years that's actually pretty standard in, in these kind of sports the women that the athletes that complain complained anonymously that was just sour grapes well i mean i think that people people are going to be upset if they lose i think that you know people in general just kind of don't like losing and and yeah they might get they might get sour and just like complain about people Yeah. I mean, I've seen, I, I don't know if the, these are real or not. I've seen pictures of trans women in, in, in sports like rugby, and it's it's kind of uh, incredibly. Uh, Do you have any like any like evidence of like trans women that are like consistently dominating their their sport or their field? Like, do you have any examples? No, I don't even. I don't even follow these sports. It just. I, I, I mean, see so the, trans uh, people have been allowed. Trans people have been allowed to compete in the Olympics in the league of the sex they transitioned to for decades, and there has never been a a person who has medically transitioned and then won any Olympic medal. Um, this has been like uh, the trans people have been able to compete in the Olympics since like the '90s. That like literally at least three decades, and there has not been a single trans person who medically transitioned and won a medal in the opposite sex. It's never happened. Like it's completely a fake outrage. Trans people are not dominating in any sport. But uh, I mean, I don't think anyone would want that to happen in sort of contact sports. I mean, there's there's a legitimate fear of like a woman, cis woman, being just killed. In do you MMA. do you have any sources of cis women being killed by trans women in contact sports? I mean, uh, and once again, I think that we can handle this on a sport by sport basis. If if sports medicine scientists do do research on trans people in contact sports and find that you know there are certain parameters which we need to tune to make sure that things are fair, I'm totally fine with that. I I think that you know we should we should allow the sports scientists to do their research such that they can come up with the most inclusive and fair policy that can that they can come up with. And yeah, I'm okay with if regulations exist, particularly in sport by sport regulations. But um, you know, all, all you have is fake outrage. Like literally, you know, you're you're all, all, once again, all you have is a hypothetical. What what if a cis woman gets punched and killed? You're just saying what if again? Yeah, I mean, like the Leah Thomas thing. It just does not pass the eye test. I mean, you saw that podium. You have this. Well, I don't care about their feelings. I care about the facts. And I, I think that we should look at the facts and the data and the science of, of, you know, how do trans people perform rather than caring about people's feelings about how Leah Thomas looks, you know? Like, it's facts over feelings, right? Yeah. I mean, but that's why we have. Uh, well, then why are you making an argument from your feelings? Well, I mean, like, we, we look at. We, we look at that um, that famous uh, swimmer who won, you know, six gold Olympic uh, medals. Uh, who? The uh, the guy who won in Beijing the six Olympic uh, medals. Um, uh, what's Who's his this name? person? No, the guy, the dude. Um, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. When you, when you see Lee Thomas, he looks like a huge hulking dude. Michael Phelps. There we go. I don't. I don't care. I don't care how you feel about how Leah Thomas looks. I care about the science and the data on how trans people actually perform in sports. Like you're once again making the same argument from your feelings. Well, I mean, sport is about musculature, and you can you can. So let's focus on the data and the science rather than your feelings about it. All right. So you you want to have very so you you're going to have a governing board, right? You're talking about sports scientists. You, it's not as if we have these boards filled with scientists. We have we literally boards. do. That's that's why wait. That's why we have NCAA policies and Olympic policies which require trans people to medically transition for years before they're allowed to play in the sport of the sex they transition to. We literally have boards of scientists that come up with these policies. They literally already exist. Yeah, and they changed the rules for Leah. No, they didn't. That's what the NCA policy was. Like before Leah Leah started playing. They they made those guidelines and they said, Okay, well, it's a year is sufficient 
for no you you have to transition for two years by NCAA guidelines and Leah Leah actually didn't compete with the women until she uh, until she had transitioned for three years because she wasn't able to compete her junior year due to COVID she had transitioned for three years prior to swimming with the women and um, the NCAA policy specifically requires two years of medical transition you can look that up okay. All right, I'll I'll get off and I'll uh, keep listening. Thanks a lot. Okay, well, thanks for coming on the live. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. Uh, hello, hello. Welcome to my live. Hey, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, how about you? What's your name? What can I call you by? I'm doing well, you just go by Nico. Nico, nice to meet you. I'm Naomi. Um, hit me up. What are you talking about? Uh, nice to meet you too. Um, I don't know. I guess I don't know where you want to start uh, with the conversation. Well, uh, it's up to you. Do you do you disagree with any of the points up above? Uh, I would say I disagree with all of it personally. All of it. All right, let's go. Let's just let's just um, I I guess where where would you like to start? I mean, we could just go down the list in order, so we could start from one. Sure. I think just personally, I I, I don't agree that trans women are women. I think uh, a woman okay. is an adult human female. So. Okay, so so what is an adult human female, and, and and why can trans women never never be an adult human female? Well, uh, an adult human female is a human being with an XX chromosomal makeup with the typical capacity to. I got I got to stop you right here. I, I, so I need to ask: Is this something that's like always true about women, or are you just making a general statement that like women typically have XX chromosomes? Uh, I'm saying that along with the with the typical biological makeup acknowledging that there are genetic variations there are certain uh -huh. mutations in genetic mutations the what the typical so, human so female is i guess if, if there's if there's all these kind of like variations and stuff then why don't we focus on on what's necessary what's required to be a woman because we're not talking about what's generally true about women we're talking about kind of the boundary cases or, or, or what is required okay. to be a woman so, so i'm gonna i guess let's reframe this to you what is required to be a female all right. Well, I'll I'll take out the whole very specific biological terms. Let's just say uh, the female is a human being with the typical capacity to bear children. Acknowledging that there are some women who hold up, cannot hold up. I asked you what's required, not what's typical, and you switch back to typical. Do you understand what I'm asking you? It's with that. What is required to be a woman? It's it's that you are yeah, an so, adult. So what's female, required? That well, well, what's required to be female? To be a woman, or do you have to be a biological female? Okay, and what's required to be a biological female? Depends on your chromosomal makeup, if you are of XX chromosomes. So you think that having XX chromosomes is required to be a female? Yes. Okay, I've got some news for you. There are cisgender women that have XY chromosomes. I know like you're going to refer to Swire syndrome. In cases of complete Swire. androgen sensitivity syndrome, in cases of Swire syndrome, there are cisgender women that have XY chromosomes. There are also cisgender men that have XX chromosomes. So clearly, there are men that have XX chromosomes, and there are women that have XY chromosomes. So it can't be something that's required of women. It's just something that's typically true of women. So I want to ask you again, what is required of being female, not just what is typically true of being female? That is what, it, so we can make the acknowledgement that yes, there are some women with like half Swire syndrome that have an XY chromosomal mutation on their 23rd chromosome, but that does not change the fact that they are still females. They have a genetic and, and chromosomal mutation, but they, at the end of the okay, day, they are so, still a so female. I, I would agree they're still female. Why are they still female? What's required of being female, which they possess? Because their genetic makeup is still that of a female. They just have a mutation. And what is that genetic makeup? Of, well, I'm not a geneticist, so I can't give you the exact down the list of what it is that makes up a female, but the chromosomal makeup in general, from what I can tell you without being a geneticist, is that you, you require the chromosomal but makeup. But we already established that the chromosomal female. makeup is not required. It, it seems is, that it you don't really know enough about genetics to even assert it, this, it is because required we've because already explained it, that this thing that you thought was required simply is not required. It's just something that's typically true. There, uh, there no, isn't any specific no, set of because, genes which we can identify, which would be people with these genes are always going to be female. People without these genes are always going to be male. Um, those kind of genes just don't exist. So, I, I, it's so, unfortunate that I have to tell you this, but yeah, those it, kind of genes don't exist. So what you're not acknowledging is that, if you let me finish, um, just because someone has Swire syndrome and they have an XY chromosome mutation does not mean they're, the, that female's entire genetic makeup is XY chromosomal mutations. They are still a female that has 
a 23rd chromosomal XY mutation, but they are still a female. It is still required that you have okay, so genetic makeup. What makes to be a them female? female? If, they, if, if, if all of their genetic makeup was not XX, they would not develop physically to have their female characteristics. If you have the entire makeup of XY chromosomes, then you are a male through and through, but they are females with an XY genetic mutation. They are still females with an with a female genetic makeup that right. also happens so to have a genetic mutation. So what makes them female? What makes them female is their female genetic makeup. It just so happens that some of these but females here's the, here's have the problem. a genetic mutation. There is not, wait, wait, stop, stop, stop. There is not any kind of specific set of genes which anyone can identify, which if you have these genes, you're always going to be female. If you have these genes, you're always going to be male. Once again, you're relying on something that's typically true. You can't base something solely off of genes because, and, and, I, it, I, I hate to break it to you, but, but these kind of but, genes which, wait, wait, stop, stop. These kind of genes which determine people's, you know, biological sex characteristics that they develop natally are not in any way binary. There are so many mixes of genes and stuff which can develop, which will cause you to develop certain biological characteristics. You can't point to these genes and say that we can draw this clean binary such that all people with certain genes are going to be biological females and all people without those genes are going to be biological males or vice versa. It simply cannot be done. The genetics is not clean like that. Okay, but see, but what you're doing is, and what a lot of people fail to see, is that you're saying, okay, because of this specific small percentage of a subset of people in the population, this is the true for their case, that we need to apply this to the grand scale of the population. You don't take someone well, who was born with... Well, here's the problem. Uh, hey, you're trying finish. to make... Hold up, hold up. No, no, no. Let me finish. You're the one who... No, wait, wait, stop, stop. I stopped to let you finish. You are the you one who is trying to make an absolute statement. You are saying that trans women are not women. Like, therefore, yes. you are trying to say something that is generally true about women to exclude trans women. You are trying to make an absolute statement with something that's only generally true you are the one that is mixing up the generality with the absolute but okay so now okay so you got to finish so i'm gonna finish you cannot take a small subset of the population and apply it to everyone in society just because one man or woman is born with two heads doesn't mean well i guess that means there are people who were born with two heads and now we have to rewrite how biology is no it that is not typical of the development of a human being someone I would, wait wait i would has, agree but here's the thing you don't get to say that somebody born with two heads isn't human, but you're trying to say that somebody who is born with certain biological characteristics isn't female. I didn't say that female. they weren't human. I didn't say that they weren't human. I say you don't take Okay, someone, then you, trans you take... women can still be female, even if they don't have all the characteristics no, that we typically cannot, associate no, with females. because they are females. not biological females. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, it, they're, they're genetic makeup. They are not biological females. Therefore, they are not women. You don't, you don't even know what the genetic makeup is. You, you've been trying to yeah, appeal not, to this I don't kind need, of vagueness. I don't need to know what the genetic makeup is. I'm not a geneticist. You don't okay, know enough but, about but genes to, to make to that claim, my dude. To look at a small subset of the population to say, oh, they have Swire syndrome, so therefore, oh, uh, yeah, so, so, so men can be women now. No, that's not how that works. Common sense tells you that just because a very small subset of the population suffers from Swire syndrome, that all of a sudden any man can be a woman. That's not how that works. It is there. Well, would you like me to explain with, why trans women can be mutation. female? Would you like me to explain why trans women can be female? Go ahead. Sure. So biological sex is multifaceted. It accounts for not just a single trait, but lots of different traits. We can think about chromosomes, hormones, anatomy, reproduction, even brain matter distributions are sexually dimorphic in humans to an extent. And when we look at the, you know, sum of all these characteristics, the composite of all these characteristics, if you're a trans woman, trans female, for example, you can actually change most of those. I mean, you can absolutely change your hormonal sex through HRT. You can change your anatomical sex through hormones and surgery. Um, you mm -hmm. can, you know, you're the brain sex of trans people is in line with the sex they transition to rather than the sex they were assigned at birth. Sure, you can't change your reproductive um, sex, at least not fully to the other direction. You can make yourself infertile, which is at least moving toward the middle of things. Um, and we've also already established that, you know, in terms of chromosomal sex, having XX chromosomes, it's not required of being female. Uh, I'm sure you'd also would believe that, you know, you don't have to be able to get pregnant to be a female. Therefore, reproductive sex, not required to be female. And in every single other category, ones that every single category other than the ones we've already established are not required. Trans women are female. They're in line with female in females in terms of hormones, anatomy, brain matter distributions. And, you know, it can be absolutely the case that you believe women are adult human females and also transgender women are women because they medically transition many aspects of their biological sex. So in the way you're talking about how trans women can apparently be women, you're, you're speaking about in terms of that there is a checkbox, that if you check these certain boxes, they become a woman. And that is exactly not the case. So 
being a woman, first of all, there are many different studies that contradict the whole idea that there is a male and female brain. The, the male brain on average tends to be larger than the female brain in proportion to uh, the, the size difference between men and women. There's a lot of differences about certain structures and how they're developed, but there really is no clear research. There's many different kinds of research. So I want to be clear. It's I, I not like, finish, it's not like you can draw finish. a clean line finish, between please, like male and female finish. brains, I but there finish, is please, some, please, some please, sexual dimorphism in brains. I, 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 I let you finish, That's why please, I specifically said to an extent sexual dimorphism exists in brains. To an extent, but you're speaking as if uh, if a man can check off a certain amount of boxes that they automatically become a woman. That's not how that works. Just because you take HRT, just because you go through cosmetic surgery does not make you a biological female. To say that you identify as a woman, that's one thing, but that does not make you a biological female. You cannot just wake up one day and say, I am a female when you have no idea what being a female is like. Only women can understand other women. Us as men cannot go one day and just say, I am a woman and have never have, have, have even had the experience of what it's like to be a woman. When women have I mean, my, God, my body is biologically female in so many ways. Being a female, and being female, it absolutely is not an has changed female, by hormones. Be, being <laughs> being female, being female is not an identity that someone one day can just throw on and say, "I am this." They are created with well, a, right. With, Biological with, and, sex and, is not is not so, a psychosocial so, identity. So, that's that's no, gender no, identity. No, 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 you're, you're gender that gender and sex are, are different women. things. So, no, I'm not talking about gender and sex because you're saying that trans women can be women. Saying that one day they, they are full on women. That there is no difference when that is not the case. Men and women are biologically different. Hold up, hold up. You're mischaracterizing me. Stop, stop. Please don't mischaracterize me. I have never said that trans women and cis women are biologically identical. My claim is that trans women and cis women are both valid types of women. There are differences between short women and tall women. There are differences between white women and black women. They are all still women. Just because you have an adjective in front of woman doesn't mean that they're no longer a woman. So the difference is when you say between a tall woman, a short woman, a black woman, a white woman, a red woman, a purple woman, is that they are actual women. And so when you go and Same talk about women. women, and so when you talk about women, you're talking about two men and women created in the same species, created differently. One with the with the absolute freaking superpower to biologically create a whole nother human being inside of them and to birth that out. Only real women know what it's like to be a real woman. You stop, cannot wake up stop, one stop, day. Stop, stop, stop. Hold up, hold up. But it's not the case that every woman can get pregnant. Okay, that doesn't change so the fact why, that So wait, wait, stop, stop. Why are you acting? The are why are you acting like being able to get pregnant is something that's absolutely true of women I that did, you're I using to deny? That, that stop, that you, stop. That Let me finish. Is not you are you are trying to say, to hold up, hold up, stop, stop. You are trying to say that trans women cannot be women because they cannot get pregnant. However, you believe that's not what that I said you do not need to be able to get pregnant to be that's a woman. That's not what I said at all. That's not what I said at all. I didn't say that. Then why are you bringing it up? Why is it relevant if it's not required? I'm simply, I'm simply just. I'm simply just saying that that Wait, is why are you bringing things up that aren't relevant? No, you're what I'm saying is that women are of the typical capacity to bear children, acknowledging that there are certain I women I don't care who what's typically true. I'm asking about what's required, what's absolutely true. That's the problem. You keep on well, going back to true wait, wait, is stop, stop. This is, this, is the core, woman. this is the core crux of the issue. You keep trying to jump back to what is typically true to try to exclude trans women, but you can't use what is typically true to exclude someone because if we were to use what's typically true about humans to exclude someone, well, then someone with 11 fingers isn't a human. Someone with two heads isn't a human. But that's so silly when you pointed out with humans. Um, but you, but you're, that's exactly you're, you're, you're what you're doing. Completely dodging, and, and I've already said this before. Just because it doesn't align of what the perfect human is, born with ten, ten fingers and ten toes, that I didn't say that they weren't human. There are genetic. Then why variations. are you saying that trans women are okay, women? One of these, these you're you're, using, you're using the I exclusion to logic when it comes speak. to trans people, but not when it comes speak. to humans. I That's stop the problem. To let you speak. I stop to let you speak. You can let me speak. Just because someone isn't born with ten toes or 10 fingers doesn't make them any less human. Just like people born with genetic yeah. mutations doesn't make them any less human from their gender. They are still, so in the example of someone with Swire syndrome, they are still a female with a genetic I agree. mutation. A woman with nine fingers is still a woman and saying that I agree. of the typical nature does not exclude those people. But being I someone agree. who is trans, someone who is trans, claiming that they are a woman, they are not a woman. They are not a biological female. Therefore, they are so not. So why? Woman. Wait, wait. Why are you trans women excluded? Wait, wait. Can, why are trans women excluded? And you can't point to something that's just typically because they're true. not Go biological women. They're not what, biological why are women. why are they not why are they not biological females? And you can't point to something that's only typically true about women. Go ahead. 
Yes, you can because they're not. They're not. No. Not, stop. They're stop. Not stop. If, you, if you're allowed, no, 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 no. Stop, you're not stop. acknowledging if that the genetic variations are not something that is only, Stop. Stop. By, you, wait, no. 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 Here's, no, the, no, here's no. the problem. You're not even engaging in the conversation. I'm asking you to point out something that is absolutely true about women, which would exclude trans women, and you can't do it. That's why you're not engaging. There is no way you can cleanly separate people by genes. It simply doesn't exist. Yeah, because the thing you're acknowledging, you're saying, is because there's genetic variation. You're once again pointing to something that's only typically true about women. You have failed to do what I asked you. You are so, not engaging in the conversation. I am engaged if you just let me finish. What I'm saying is, you're saying that uh, it's not engaging in the conversation because I'm, not, I'm only referring to, a typ to what is typical. I acknowledge that there are variations, but that does not mean that all of a sudden we can't refer to what is typical because at the end of the day, what isn't typical- You can not absolutely talk about what is- Wait, wait, no, because, you are no, no, absolutely no, 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 allowed no. to talk about what is- Stop, stop. You are absolutely allowed to talk about what is typically true about women, but you're not allowed to point to something that is only typically true about women to exclude people from womanhood. That's the problem. Yes, you Just can. like how you can't point okay. to it is typical that we have 10 fingers to exclude people from humanhood. You can't point to it is typical that you can get pregnant or have XX chromosomes or have certain genes to be a woman to exclude people from womanhood. What is typically true True is not exclusionary criteria. You keep making that mistake. Okay, so you keep interrupting me. So let me answer your question. I'm going to. I'm going well, to yeah, because you're lying and not engaging in the conversation and not doing what I asked of you. Exactly. That's uh, to it. So you're saying that if someone has nine figures, then they're excluded from being human. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Just like I said, if someone has a genetic mutation, well, right? Because you're logically inconsistent. You're treating you wanna... the, the you're treating the bar for humanhood differently than you're treating the bar for womanhood because you're logically inconsistent. That's what I'm pointing no. out. No, no, I'm letting you be. I'm, I'm, I'm just, just, I, I'm not. Just stop interrupting me. Just let me speak. You don't want to hear me. Well, out. then engage in the conversation, and I, and I won't interrupt with you. So just no, or just, just be respectful. Okay, I stopped to let you finish. Now how about, how about be logically consistent and engage in the conversation? It's not that hard. I'm telling you, I can refer to typical women as being the standard because anything outside the typical development of what a woman is supposed to healthily and biologically develop. What do you into, mean supposed to? Uh, and wait, wait, what, what do you mean by supposed to? Of how the natural development of a female is supposed, supposed to. Supposed to is so subjectively loaded. I, like, here's the thing. Genetic variations uh, are supposed biology, to happen. That's how species biology, evolve. How like, you can't point to what is supposed to happen because biological variation, genetic variation, these are all supposed to happen. So you are trying to use subjectively loaded language to lead no, people it's not, down don't to a certain conclusion. That subjectively loaded language crap. I'm saying because there is a natural development that is supposed to occur with women. When things happen There's also the natural of development of things, genetic variations, the natural development things, of trans and, people and, and their brains. That's all natural too. And when things happen outside the natural development that is not typical but we still regard them to what they are supposed to be a man claiming that they are a woman because they grow their hair out and take hrt and saying that they're a woman that is not uh abtypical behavior of a woman or a separate category or a separate subset of women that's just not a woman you cannot why are you why are you appealing to typicality isn't that an ad populum fallacy that's just, it's just, you just, you, you cannot do that. Wait, you cannot why, do that. Why are you, your, your, your entire argument so, is just the ad populum fallacy. That's all you have. No, I, it, the whole thing is just common sense. You cannot, you, oh, how can you make up, so how logical can you fallacy make up one day, common sense now? how do you know you're a woman when you've never been a woman? Because I am a woman. It's that simple. So what is a woman to you? What is a woman? Well, I, so I separate sex and gender. I see woman as a social, social category rather than a biological one. So a woman is just a social construct. Well, gender is by definition socially constructed. Yeah. So then you're not actually a woman. You're just a woman by whatever the social construct says. So are you well, acknowledging I mean, is, that you're not actually Are you saying that like money doesn't actually exist? Just because something's a social construct doesn't mean it's not real. Like money is real. We just kind of made up the concept of money as a society, just like we made up the concept of, of woman and man as social categories. And when I move no, through they're, the world, they're... when I when I am perceived and and by by others in society, I am perceived and treated as a woman. That's my lived social experience. I am absolutely gendered as a woman by society. And if we recognize gender as a social phenomenon, then I am a woman under that framework. But at the end of the day, you're not a woman. You can say you consider yourself a woman as, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I socially, this is what I portray myself as or what I identify as. But at the end of the day, you're acknowledging that you're not a woman. How so? I am biologically female in many ways as well. Uh, every, no. every 
that biological sex category, which we have talked about, that is not required of, of being a female. I am in line with females. Well, or, or sorry, every everyone other than the ones that we have talked about as not being required of females. I am in line with females, not males. My body is biologically female in many ways. Well, just because you've put in the money and work to check off the boxes to what you think is a female doesn't make you a female. You were not born a female. You have no idea. I don't, what... I don't get to decide what's a male or female characteristic. <laughs> like this is what biologists um, no, study. And bi biologists bi bi recognize bi that, wait, biology stop. Biologists recognize that. that biological sex is multifaceted. And in most biological sex categories, I'm in line with females, it's, not males. And, 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 and that's all it's been. It's that, it's this, the idea of being a woman is just a mask that anyone could put on and say one day that I am a woman. When, when people who claim that they are women who actually aren't women have no idea what it's like to be a woman. They have no idea of the struggles of real women in society and the fights that they have gone through throughout history to do you to, think wait, wait do you think that I don't have the experiences of women? Trans women are subject to misogyny. I, I go through all of these social experiences that women do, and I even go through some biological experiences that, that typical females do as well. That's my that's my biological and social truth. So do you think one of the experiences of what it means to be a woman is to suffer through misogyny? That's what it means to be a woman? That's certainly one characteristic of womanhood. That's not a characteristic of being a woman. So that is a characteristic of being a woman, so, so at, least in, to, at least in our society. So, so, in our, so in order to be a woman, you have to be a victim of misogyny. Didn't say it was required. I just said it's one aspect of womanhood. But it's not really an aspect of womanhood. That's just victim mentality. That is not what it means to be a woman. It is certainly an aspect of womanhood. I'm not saying that it's everything there is to womanhood. I'm just saying it's an aspect of womanhood being subject to the social pressures of misogyny. It's something it, that we experience. It is not an aspect of woman. To say that because you experience misogyny, that is an aspect of being a woman. Being a woman is a lot more than that. Being a woman is not something that you can just relegate to being something that you can throw on and say, I'm a woman because I suffer. That's like saying, I'm a woman because I like pink and because I, I, I like to do not this that's, that's no, no. You're, you're, you're conflating doing social roles with being perceived and treated within a social role. So essentially, regardless of whether or not I like pink or blue or, or dresses or, or shirts, people are going to perceive and treat me as a woman. The gender roles and expectations that people assign to me are going to be women simply because of how they perceive me. And, you know, whether or not I engage in these feminine behaviors will not affect, you know, what, how people are going to gender me, but it might affect how they perceive me as far as being gender non-conforming or not. But whether you are, whether, regardless of how you perceive or treat, it doesn't change the fact that a woman is a woman and a man is a man. There are certain things. So you're just going to say something that's tautologically true? Yeah, a woman is a woman and a trans woman is a woman. Boom, easy peasy. Trans a trans woman is I can use woman. tautology too. You're not that it's special. Just, you just, it's, it's not about that. It's just, you cannot, how, you cannot say that you are something that you've never had gone through a single day without experiencing what it's like to be a woman. But I do have the experiences of women. People perceive and treat me as women. And socially, that's what it means to be a woman. All right, there's, 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 there's no conversation here. Well, I, I hope- Well, yeah, because you refuse to engage in the conversation. I'm, I'm engaged in the conversation. It's just you just, it's just you. No, you're you, not. You have never been able to point to anything that is required of womanhood that is absolutely true of women because you refuse to engage in the conversation. Because being a woman is something that you just, you cannot relegate to something that you just throw on like a mask. Being the identity of being a woman. I don't think a, that womanhood a, is a costume. A, I think it's a lived social being, experience. Being, being, you're you're being, mischaracterizing me. It's just, it's just, no, it's just in general with everything. It's just, no, you, unless you are a biological woman and you live that, you were born that way, you live that way. Well, that good is, thing I'm you, biologically female in so many ways. You might like to think that you align, you might align to those things biologically because you've done things to change that, but that does not yeah, make you because right. biological sex is mutable. No, that's just, that is, that is, no, that's just not how that works. And at the end of the day, in hundreds of years and thousands of years, when they dig up your bones and they're going to say, yep, that was a male. I love this. I love this talking point because you're so wrong. Do you know what creates sexually dimorphic uh, bone structure? It's hormones. If you take cross-sex hormones from a young age, you will actually develop the bone structure of the opposite sex. When they dig up my body, my, my pelvic bone has been changed by estrogen to be in line with females, not males. I love that talking point because you're wrong. Ah, nice one. All he had was being wrong.